Hello everybody. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Louise Ferguson. Um, I'm chairman of the Legotto Club of Great Britain. Um, I own Legotto. I've had Legotto now for 11 years. I breed them. I, uh, I show them. I judge them. And um, about eight or nine years ago, uh, because I enjoyed uh, grooming my own Legotto, I trained to, as a groomer for all breeds. Um, and until a year ago, I did um, all breeds part-time, um, but I now specialise in only Legotto, so I probably groom about, oh, I don't know, um, eight or nine Legotto a week, something like that. Um, I've been contacted recently, uh, since the outbreak of the coronavirus, by my clients and uh, members of the club, um, who are worrying about how they should manage their Legotto coat over the foreseeable future. So I put together um, a series of um, short films to help you um, uh, look after your Legato coat. It covers clipping, um, it covers how to, to do their nails, uh, pluck their ears, um, uh, shape the head, um, all the things that everyone worries about. Um, and hopefully it'll just to give you a bit of confidence um, I also talk a bit about the equipment where you may need um, and uh, so yes let's hope that it it's it'll encourage you all to have a go um, because you can't leave your logotto all summer without having a groom um, I do warn you they're going to be a little bit Heath Robinson because I'm um, having to uh, make these films by myself um, my husband and I are um, in self-isolation uh, but he can't come into my grooming room because he has an allergy to dog hair so um, for that reason I'm having to make do uh, myself so apologies if the quality is not particularly good um, and uh, but anyway hopefully it'll help you and um, give you the confidence to, to give it a go. One of the first things people have asked me is what type of equipment, what kind, kind of clippers they should buy. So I've laid out one or two essential items here. Um, some of them you don't necessarily need to fork out and buy, but um, I'll show you the basics. I'll show you what clippers I use. Um, obviously I use a professional clipper. This is the clipper I use on a day-to-day -day basis. It's uh, quite an expensive. Uh, piece of kit. It's £300 plus. It's um, ha um, it's cable free, so um, it comes with a spare battery. Um, it's, it's, it's a fantastic piece of um, equipment and uh, as I say the professionals tend to use it so you may not want to fork out um, that sort of money particularly if you're not planning to continue grooming your Legato by yourself. Um, before I started using that um, I used to use uh, these clippers that had cables and they're perfectly adequate and do the job um, but I just tend to obviously prefer those because if I'm working all day in the, in the grooming room it's, it's just easier not to have to think about the cables. Um, there are so many different brands on the market um, in an ideal world you should be uh, trying them all for size and we all want different sort of to weights, they're all ergonomically slightly different. It's a good idea if you're looking on a, a, on a, a groom's, groomer's supply, supplier web, website to um, look at the star rating because that'll give you an indication as to how good they are. These are all, uh, this, this is an Oster, these are slightly heavier than these Moser. Um, I think they all sort of ranged between about 120 and probably about 200 pounds, I suppose. Um, these, um, all of these three, use the classic sort of basic um, clipper range. Um, you can see you've got all sorts of different sizes. The, the higher the number on the, on, the, on the blade is the smaller or the shorter the clip. So the higher numbers are, are much broader. Um, but I would suggest if you're, uh, for this summer, I would suggest you take your dog's coat off fairly short, just so you don't need to worry about it. So um, you're talking about, I mean, 10 is, is really quite short. That's 1.8, I think, is it right? 1.5, um, going up to the five, which is a 6.3 millimeter. So I'd be looking at 10, sub, sevens or fives. Um, the, I also use this. This is a, 
classed as a trimmer. Again, it's it's um, hands well, it's cable free, um, a spare battery. Um, it's it's classed as a trimmer, which means that uh, generally you use them for the sort of preparation work. So inside the ear flap, the under the arms, and the sanitary areas. Um, but you can use them um, for the whole body. Um, it's got a slightly different type of a clipper blade on it, which is unique to this, um, I think. There may be others, but anyway. Um, but you can, this, you can extend the length of the clipper. You can see the teeth there, you've got more length on that. And you've got, I think, two or three settings. Um, that's the shortest. If you've got a very matted dog, you would have to go down to the shortest length because the longer one would get caught up in the coat. You can extend, you can get um, sort of plastic sort of um, extension combs to go on that, but to be perfectly honest, they're not ideal on a Logato coat because the coat's so thick and, um, you know, the, 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 the wool uh, undercoat just gets caught up in it. So I, I also use these for puppies. A, 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 a puppy that's not used to being clipped, this is a nice quiet um, clipper and um, it's, it, that's what I do uh, puppies with. But you know, if you're wanting just to, to do it for a, one or two clips a year, um, then yes, it, it should be fine. Um, then you want some good scissors. This is my favorite uh, uh, maker scissor, the, the Rose Line. Um, this is the one that I use. Um, it's quite, quite a long, narrow uh, blade, but um, I like it because it's lightweight and when I'm scissoring, Legato for the show ring um, and general day-to-day -day stuff as well. It's it, it just I, I, it suits me. But again, ideally, we're all different. We have different tastes. So unfortunately, you're not going to have a chance to go out and try any scissors. But um, any any rose line I recommend. These are all rose line as well. This is a a blender which has got one straight um, blade and one with teeth. So that's for um, helping to shape the head. It's it gives a nice a so, nice soft finish. You don't need to um, buy those if you're only going to be doing it temporarily. It's, it's, again, it's an expense. Uh, these I use because if we're breaking up mats, uh, if you get a couple of snips at the base of uh, uh, the felted areas um, and then you can comb it through. It just sort of removes um, some of the hair but not leaving you a great big um, chunk of open, open chunk of um, area. So that's that. Um, your metal comb, this is a greyhound comb. Um, you really don't need much more than that for, for breaking up the, the, your Logotto coat. I mean, there are mat breakers which you can get, but to be honest, um, if, you're, if you're clipping your Logotto off, you don't even have to go through it with a comb. Particularly if it's matted, don't even bother because you're going to cause the dogs to distress. What you want to do is to get your clipper blade underneath the felting um, so the space between the felting and the skin is the length of coat that you will be left with. Um, and uh, if it's very, very matted, then you're probably only likely to get a, a 10 or a 7 underneath it. Um, so I wouldn't worry about the comb. You might need the comb for the head, but, you know, okay. Uh, some nail clippers. Um, those are fairly basic. This is, I mean, you do... If you've got the gotta that's very, very um, sensitive to having nails done, then the Dremel here is quite good. It's like to make a sort of a sort of buzzing, whirring sound. It's like a a, a, a rotating emery board um, that I, you know I use on the very sensitive ones. Um, there's some ear cleaner, uh, plucking powder, and thornet, which are, are good to have in your cupboards anyway. Um, so uh, yeah, that's. Pretty much in terms of the equipment, that's what you, you need other than the grooming table. And I'll go on to that in a minute. So here we have a basic grooming table suitable for a Logotto. It's a medium size. It's the measurement of the base is, I think it's 90 centimeters by 60. Um, it's a good size for a Logotto. It's got an H bar, which is removable. You can undo the, um, Thing at the bottom and move that. You can move the bar up and down. Um, these, you can buy the H-bars um, on their own. So you could fit that onto a, 
uh, an ordinary table if you wanted to, a reasonably small one, because obviously it only stretches to a certain extent. But you can buy those separately, so that's an alternative. Um, but I do recommend that you put your dog on a table and you secure it with a noose or a collar and lead or something uh, around the neck um, and then a belly strap um, to secure so they don't keep sitting down. It just, uh, um, uh, it's much safer to have them secured like that than uh, having someone hold them. Um, ideally you want your dog nice and safe so it can't fall off the table um, and you're secure because you're not wrestling with the dog whilst you're, you've got sharp scissors in your hand or, or clippers. Um, a lot of you probably try getting your partner to hold on to the dog. I mean, okay, you can do that, but it's not ideal because the dog will is more likely to resist and, you know, uh, things get a bit fraught and um, it's just so much better when grooming a legato to keep the atmosphere calm, relaxed, and if your dog is nice and safe and secure and yours relaxed and, and not running the risk of, of, well, you're not wrestling with your dog, you're going to have a much better and more relaxed um, uh, atmosphere.